guys, what's up? Today's video is going to be a bit different. It's not about product engineering or design per se, but it's about something at the intersection of finance and technology. It is actually my internship defense in my final year of IBA. And, and just yesterday, I presented this to a group of faculty members who raised all sorts of questions and I hopefully was able to answer them properly. Today, I want to share this with you because uh, I posted this on Facebook and a lot of people seemed interested. So if you're interested in the Dhaka Stock Exchange, how to use Python to do backtesting and generally in terms uh, and generally interested in things at the intersection of finance and technology, which I certainly am, then feel free to watch this. I'm going to break this video into parts. First part, I'm going to give you some background about the Dhaka Stock Exchange because many of you might be interested but haven't yet, uh, you know, experienced what it's like trading in the stock exchange. Uh, especially here in Dhaka and then I'm also going to guide you through what I did for my project and uh, how I actually went about coding this entire thing. So feel free to move through the timestamps into whatever interests you. Um, if you haven't already, please like, share and subscribe to this channel because it helps us reach more people and it keeps me motivated to make more videos. Um, this is slightly off topic compared to our usual product or design videos. If you are interested in things at the intersection of finance and technology, which I certainly am, um, then feel free to let me know in the comments and if there are other topics or other projects that you would want me to undertake uh, similar or dissimilar to this, let me know. Um, with that, let me dive right into it. So my project was titled Using Python to Backtest Trading Strategies in the Dhaka Stock Exchange. Now some quick definitions, backtest versus real-time trading. Backtests are basically using historical data about things that have happened in the past and it's running certain uh, logic or strategies on that data to understand what the results could have been had those strategies been applied. A real-time al trading algorithm or a trading bot trades in the market, uh, quote unquote, real time and follows some strategy. There's a difference between the two. One can either make you money in real time or you know basically execute trades for you in real time. The other, helps you uh, helps you think through your strategy helps you understand had you applied this strategy in the past how it would have performed what i did was a back test mostly because there is no uh, application there is no api or application programming interface for the Dhaka stock exchange to execute trades which means that i would basically not be able to create a trading bot here in bangladesh to my knowledge uh, if any of you have or tried or you know know some tricks let me know the, uh, and so I was limited to kind of uh, looking at historical data and understanding how particular strategies would perform. So, okay, now a bit of history about the Dhaka Stock Exchange. It was originally founded in 1954. And at the time we were, Bangladesh was part of East Pakistan. Um, and it was called the East Pakistan Stock Exchange Association, I think. And at that time, although, you know, it was established, not much trading happened. It was not until 1956, uh, I believe, that the first trade happened. And even then, for many, many years, it was all manual trading, i.e. someone would literally shout out, for example, I think this is how it happened from what I've heard. You would say, I want to sell five shares of Grameen phone. And someone else would say, for how much? And uh, you would say, and this would basically be some, something like an auction. Um, it was, there was also paper, um, it was, the whole system was also paper-based, i.e. you would get a certificate that you own 50 shares of Grameen phone, let's say. Uh, Grameen phone didn't list until much later. This is uh, just for example. Um, and <laughs> because this was so auction-driven and so paper-based, there was a lot of forgery and a lot of people basically saw this as a very inefficient way to invest their money. It was not until later in 1998, I believe, that we actually introduced an automated trading system in the Dhaka Stock Exchange. We also moved from a system built by ourselves to something that was based on an IFC formula later in 1993, I believe. So uh, again, I'm going to fact check and uh, put up a diagram here, a timeline about all the different uh, things that happened in the stock exchange that led up here to today in 2021, when we have 578 companies listed in the Dhaka Stock Exchange and a market capitalization of $46 billion. Um, although that is you know, a, in, an improvement from where we were, this is still the lowest market cap to GDP ratio among the countries near us, our regional peers, if you will. India, Pakistan, Vietnam, we have the lowest market cap to GDP ratio in the region. So there is lots of room to grow and lots to improve, but that gives you a glimpse of where we are today. Um, currently, 
in the Dhaka Stock Exchange, like I mentioned, there is no application programming interface. There is no way to do automated trading. But we, what we can do is take historical data of certain stocks and understand how they would have performed if we had followed the specific strategy, let's say a few years ago. Now, um, with, that, uh, with that out of the way and with, uh, by setting some context, let's dive into the project. What did I actually want to accomplish? I wanted to test a certain strategy on historical data from on stocks in the Dhaka Stock Exchange. Very simple. Specifically, there are some steps that I followed to get there. Number one, I had to choose a strategy. Number two, I had to choose a data set, i.e. Uh, a certain time period and certain stocks to actually uh, test the strategy on. Secondly, uh, thirdly, I had to choose a benchmark, something to compare it to. You, you know, um, so whenever we actually come up with a result, we need to compare it to something to understand whether it's relatively good, bad. That's one way of comparing at least. The last thing is that we need certain metrics by which we evaluate whether this trading strategy is working well or not. So with those four things in mind, let's go through each one. Number one, selecting a strategy. Well, this entire report came from some inspiration after reading some books. One such book was Stocks on the Move by Andrew Clendon. I think I am pronouncing his name right. He basically talked about momentum investing. Momentum investing is basically um, the idea that stocks that are rising in price will continue to rise in price and therefore you should buy them and you should sell them when they seem to be they, they, when they seem to have peaked and are about to fall. Very simple. Um, there are many nuances, but this is a very straightforward logic and it holds very true as he outlined in his book. Uh, if you follow this strategy, you could make lots of profit in a bullish market. Now the market conditions are very important as he outlines and there's a reason why it doesn't perform well in bearish market conditions. Again, bullish market conditions meaning market is generally positive, stock prices are generally going up, the index, whatever index that is, is going up for the market and bearish, uh, bearish markets are generally the opposite. It's going down, down, down and uh, it's just not uh, very positive. Now, all of this is to say, I chose to follow a momentum strategy for this uh, whole report. And that takes us to the second part. What do we apply this momentum strategy on, i.e. the data set? I took the DSE 30, which is the, which is 30 large cap companies in the Dhaka Stock Exchange. Uh, and I looked at the time period uh, during which the Dhaka Stock Exchange was relatively stable, i.e. not bullish or bearish, uh, kind of bearish actually but relatively stable. Uh, this was because in 2010 to 11, there was a big crash. In 2017, there was a big rally, but I basically needed some, I basically wanted to apply this to something where the market was generally stable. The market cycle was uh, not transitioning from bullish to bearish, i.e., you know, maybe it was all bullish or, or bearish. Um, and there was reasons for doing that. And also I wanted to control for enough data points. I, uh, I needed at least, or I wanted at least two to three years of data. And I was able to settle between 2014, the beginning of 2014 to the end of 2016, i.e. 36 months of stock market data during a time when the stock market didn't move to outside 4,000 to 5,000 uh, points. And this was generally bearish in the Bangladesh stock market, but it's fine because it's relatively stable. It's not a huge crash or a big boom. Um, and this, the strategy should be working okay. Could you apply this to other time periods? Yes. Uh, is, my, is this uh, method of judgment on the data set completely foolproof? No. In fact, I, after doing the initial report, I have tried other strategies in other time periods and have yielded higher profits, um, theoretically. This is a back test, by the way. So. There's that. Now, the third thing was selecting a benchmark. This was pretty easy. I chose the DSEX benchmark because it's representative of the entire stock exchange. And um, also uh, another reason for choosing the data set that I did was because in 2013, the calculation for the DSEX changed, i.e. we adopted something from the standard uh, from standard and poor S&P as you might know them and the calculation for DSEX index changed. So I wanted to have something where the DSEX index was calculated in the same way from before and after. Um, so there's that as well. So I selected the DSEX benchmark. Lastly, how do we measure performance? Um, there are many ways to do this again, uh, but I chose a simplified uh, way of doing it. I eat three things that I looked at were number one, a risk reward ratio also called the Sharpe ratio. Basically, how much return are you getting for the amount of risk that you're taking on? 
Number two, I looked at volatility. I looked using the maximum drawdown metric, and that's basically a distance from the peak to the draw of whatever returns that you're getting. And it's basically an indication of how volatile your portfolio is. Um, lastly, I looked at the normalized annual return, i.e. in a single year, how much return can you expect following this strategy on your portfolio? Those were the, those were the metrics, and that's how I basically structured this entire report. Now. I am open sourcing the code. In the comments, you'll find uh, a GitHub link where I've open sourced the entire code base. Uh, please feel free to tear it apart, criticize it, give me feedback. It only helps me learn more because uh, there are a few more experiments coming, hopefully. But uh, let me know. So with that, I think I've generally laid out most things. So I executed the whole thing in Python. It's basically because I had a grasp on the language. There is a open source community of Python developers out there. And many people have worked on stock exchange stuff, even though it's not for Bangladesh and I had to make some modifications. People have created packages like Backtrader on which you can build on top of instead of starting from scratch. And I use Backtrader actually, and it was a huge help because uh, other people have reviewed it, worked on top of it, and you're able to kind of code certain logics on top of it instead of building from scratch. So that was super interesting. Um, I, collected, I collected the data from investing.com. DSC doesn't have all the, uh, all, doesn't have data available for you to download, but investing.com is super good. If you're working in the tax stock exchange, you should check that out. Um, and the results, okay. now the results of running this strategy, are okay we didn't make a loss but not, the results weren't great if you had invested 1 million taka you would have made one 147,000 taka by the end of it three year period now while that's not a loss if it depends on what we're comparing it to now if you look at the dscx index there was roughly a 14 percent return during the same time period I put that in asterisk because there is no simple way in which you would have uh, have access or exposure to that return, i.e. there is no DSEX ETF in which you could equally uh, invest in all the DSEX stocks or the DSE 30 uh, in which you would invest DSE 30 stocks. Uh, why not? Let me explain. So in a more sophisticated market, you would have something like a S&P 500 where you could invest $1,000 into uh, all 500 companies in the S&P 500 index, uh, you know, and it would be allocated uh, based on market cap. The weight would be set as such. But in Bangladesh, there is no ETF. And so there is no direct or easy way for you to invest in, let's say, the top 30 companies or top 50 companies. Uh, in equal proportion and uh, no way to uh, maintain that position size as you know changes occur in the market so a 14 percent return is not as easily accessible or not super representative of what of what you would have access to that being said there are mutual funds and other fund managers who've uh, you know either exceeded or performed below this uh, particular 2.1 percent return rate well, i'm not trying to defend this strategy uh, i think i could have uh, i think the strategy could have performed a lot better uh, either by different rules or with a different data set but I'm just trying to uh, represent some nuances of how the Bangladesh Stock Exchange uh, is different from you know stuff that you would read about or listen to about other more Western stock exchanges. There is no ETF. Uh, there is no exposure to multiple stocks through one uh, you know general index, and those are just some considerations. Also, look at the three metrics that we had set for ourselves. Number one, the risk reward ratio or the Sharpie ratio. It is generally considered that a Sharpie ratio more than one is good. Uh, anything more than one is preferred, but in this case, we earned a 0.198, i.e. we performed pretty poorly. In our case, uh, the ratio was 0.198. We performed pretty poorly uh, when it came to a Sharpie ratio. We took on a lot more risk for not enough return. And that's indicated as well by the volatility or maximum drawdown metric, where there's roughly there is roughly a 40, 34% uh, or 35% uh, level of vol maximum drawdown. This is highly volatile strategy, but from what I've read online, these kind of um, algorithmic trading or in our case backtesting is generally pretty volatile. But even then, 35% uh, is pushing it, especially if you're not earning that much reward. If the Sharpie ratio was higher, 1.5 or 2, we would probably be okay with this level of risk or volatility, but that is not the case. And so we're not okay with this. Uh, the normal annualized return rate is also 2.1%. Again, 14% versus 2%. So 
not great. What are my takeaways from this entire thing? Number one, the data set really matters. I picked a time three years when the market was bearish between a 4,000 to 5,000 uh, index range and this time period did not suit or it was not ideal for a momentum strategy. I learned this too late and I didn't correct it during my internship report but uh, you know, since then, uh, roughly two months since then, I've been working and trying other strategies during this time. If you want me to, I could share more about this. Uh, let me know in the comments. And I'm happy to also do some live coding sessions about these uh, strategies because I'm trying to practice a bit more and uh, I would love to, uh, you know, share with you and learn from you uh, as I'm sure, you know, the internet provides a lot of lessons. Okay, now, um, what are my takeaways? Uh, momentum strategy doesn't work too well in a bearish market. And this has to do with in a bearish market, stocks are generally not considered for its over uh, independent merits, uh, i.e. the market tends to go up or down and the correlation, the beta between different stocks are is pretty high. This has been observed in multiple markets over many years of uh, data, but, but in my case, um, I was trying to control for other things like market crashes as well as having enough data and so I chose this three year period. Since this report, uh, since I've got done with this report, I've done other experiments where I apply the momentum strategy on other data sets and it's performed relatively better. I'm still trying to find the sweet spot of let's say more than 1.5 um, of sharp Sharpie ratio, but um, that is for another day and I'll let you know if I uh, crack that anytime soon. Now the DSCX actually now actually had an 8.4% return during this time. What that means is that our strategy yielded a 2.1% return, annual rise return, whereas the DSCX had an annual return of 8.4%. It's clearly roughly four times better performing. There are no easy ways to invest in the top companies, let's say top 30 or top 50 companies here in Bangladesh in one go. So unlike an S&P 500 index fund abroad, there is no easy way for you to, let's say, allocate a thousand dollars into all the top companies with, you know, uh, in a market cap weighted fashion where, you know, uh, if certain companies are excluded or included that automatically gets adjusted um, all of that has to be done manually here and so the 8.4 percent uh, you know return that the dscx experienced during this time could not be passively uh, enjoyed you can't passively invest in bangladesh as much compared to uh, you know more sophisticated markets thank you for watching so far i am open sourcing my code uh, that I did during this internship period. Uh, you'll find the link in the description here. Um, long video. I hope some of this was useful. This report, I'm not claiming it to be perfect by any stretch of imagination. Now, I'm not claiming this is a perfect execution of a momentum strategy or of a back test. And I'm still, uh, you know, uh, exploring this whole thing a lot more. So if you have ideas, if you have comments, let me know. This was uh, done for my internship report at IBA and uh, I'm very glad to have done it. If you want more videos at the intersection of technology and finance, let me know. I would be happy to do it. If you enjoyed this video and want me to make more videos at the intersection of finance and technology, then please let me know. If you enjoyed this, please share it with your friends. Uh, it uh, helps this channel a great deal. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.